gotta, I got to do this here, man. So Mark gets a win. And Philly 500 is now 92. Holy shit, is he going to be unbearable? This is going to be great here. So without further ado, it is Battle Royale this turkey week. It is the man who is the number one man who covers the Dallas Cowboys, Mark Holmes. And he is a Philly legend. Philly 500. He joins us as well here. How you boys Yeah! Doing? Yeah! Yeah. I love how you just trash me, my organization, and everything else before I even get on here. I mean, literally, you done piled up. I mean, it, it, the, the amount of garbage you done put up is like your, your, your screen back there behind you. It's a pile of shit. What? The vet? <laughs> yes. The vet's a hey, pile Hey, don't mess with that place. That 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 up, you, man. Billy. The bathroom sucked. Oh, Okay. I hated using the, the bathroom. Thing. Okay, okay. No, I right. love that stadium. Are you kidding me? Okay, I would take that stadium did. any day of the week. Mark brings fake chickens on. I bring real kittens. All right? Oh. We're talking about a real team oh. and fakeness. Fake, real. You know what I'm saying? I, oh, that's yeah. horrible there. Kids thank are you, always thank wanted you. here on this program. Hey, by the way, since you have a chain around the neck of that cowboy, have you thrown the season overboard? You know, um, Jerry Jones is great at selling hope, okay? Um, I know I, where he's... I, I have no delusions of thinking that this team is going to, you know, be a playoff team and do something. Uh, you know, I had a, a Chef David came over to the house on Sunday, and he said to me, he said, you know, yeah, what, what if we run the table? I was like, David, I know you make edibles. Are you getting high in your own supply? I'm like, we're going to get get killed in this game right here. And I, I'll be honest with you, I was 100% surprised that we found a way to win that game. Now, the schedule does get more favorable with the Giants right now, which you got uh, Tommy Cutlets, who got an elbow issue right there. You, you'll probably get a win there. You got Cincinnati after that. You got Carolina, and you got um, Tampa Bay. You guys may have wrapped up home field advantage in, at, by, by by the Eagles game, and then we got the Commanders with the left hand up, and they stay. Billy, this sounds like a guy who's on the deck of the Titanic, hoping the boat don't go down. Let, 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 I'm I'm going to tell you. I know this guy. I know this guy. I know how he thinks. After tomorrow's win. Versus the Giants. Wait a minute, you're saying we're going to win? Gonna start. Well, yeah, I mean, we yeah, haven't I mean, won. I mean, hold on. A, we ain't won a game the whole all season. You're, yeah, but you're not time. playing a real football team. You're not. <laughs> you know what? The way we played in some of those games, I'm not sure we'd be a flag football team. Listen, listen, you're, not, you're not reversing this on us, dog. You're I beating mean, after, a shitty team. Listen, a, 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 listen after, after, after tomorrow. Down, Dan, you, you put it out in a nutshell. The Cowboys didn't do shit. You're literally telling us we should have signed. Daniel Jones. I mean, yeah. that's not as rock bottom as it gets. Uh, well, shit, man, Jones, the your quarterback you have right now is rock bottom. He sucks. Yeah, well, 249 yards, two TDs, at least in the tournament. Oh, oh, you see? God. You see? At, at it's this happening. Point, it's happening. Okay. All right. All right. Here, here's like the tomorrow, deal. when they win, when they win, Mark will start pushing playoffs. Well, no, I guys, won't be pushing playoffs. Holmes, no, it's possible no. play. We're sitting Strangers in the 14th spot happen. right now. We can 14. do it. It's going to happen. 14. I don't care. You're okay. going to do it. I know you. I know you too well. You're going to push the playoffs. It's going to happen. Five and seven, and you said you got Carolina potentially there. If you win those two games, you're seven and seven. Yeah, I hear you. I hear, you know what? If, if, if hands and butts were nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. Well, I I'm mean, not we're not talking about chalk or not. We're not I talking have about been, juggernaut teams here. I, I I agree, but we're we're talking about the Cowboys. They're not a juggernaut team either. Although we will be getting some of our players back. I mean, see, you know, that, you see? that does help. No, see, <laughs> see, I see how you're trying to turn this around. On I, 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 just, I think I think you I think you should be be thinking they can make the playoffs if they win tomorrow. I think that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Who in the NFC outside of Detroit? Watch this, in Philly. In the NFC, Xander and I did this yesterday. Okay, when you look at the rest of those teams, Green Bay, okay, 
Minnesota, maybe. And then mm-hmm. after that, who? Atlanta? Um, what? I, I, um, what? What do you got? The Rams? The Seahawks? Seahawks I mean, these are all guys who could throw in a hat. I, I think there are three legitimate teams in this conference. I yes. think Detroit oh, Eagles and Green Bay. I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's true. I, I mean, those are the three teams to me that have a chance going into the playoffs. Um, now, the problem Green Bay has is they play in a division where they could have what 12, 13 wins and be a wild card team on the road. Right. Yeah. Going, you know that 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 hurts you. That that could come mm-hmm. back and haunt them. Um, so. I think, I mean, like I said, I, I think this looks like a, a a collision course for Eagles Detroit um, down the stretch. I, yeah, it just seems Thank like you we're on that. You know? Well, how about this, though, Philly? Like you said, the NFC North, you could have a team with 11 wins and a team with 12 wins, and they're both wild card teams, especially if Detroit continues to win the way they are. Um, let me ask you this here, man. The loss of Brandon Graham, Philly, is what? Oh, uh, it's a uh, brutal. I would say brutal loss. Brutal loss. Um, I I don't think it means that this defense is going to somehow collapse and it's all over. I think Brandon Graham was playing. I mean, that that was the best game I've seen Brandon Graham play in two years. Excellent. He looked great. Um, and, and I think it, I think it's a big loss. And, and I think his presence there it, it doesn't help. However, here's what I'll say. I think they still got. They still got a good defense. They're playing really good. And I like and I think Vic Fangio deserves the opportunity to find out or you know, find a way um, to, to, you know, make up for the loss. He's very good at taking guys and what they do good and using it to their uh, ability. So maybe you have four more five man fronts. There's talk about Vaughn being on the edge at times, things like that. But I, I think. I think we got to see uh, what adjustments he'll be made. Now, to you, Mark, what do the Eagles do that the Cowboys aren't doing as a franchise? <laughs> you, you're really going to ask that question? Yeah. Here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. You have different buckets of way of getting talent, okay? Now, you can't argue with the Dallas Cowboys literally fighting players from the USFL. When you look at Turpin, the way he's running and stuff, and now Josh uh, Daniels, you know, granted, it's only his second game as a starter, but another USFL guy that actually looks pretty good in the secondary. The problem with the Cowboys is they never draft to complement, okay? They always draft to replace. Every year we end up letting go, last year, nine starters. And you can't look and say, well, we're just going to take the guys we had last year and we're going to take some journeymen and we're going to put together and we're going to collectively be a team. The Eagles, I, you know, I envy them because when they make a mistake on a player, they don't sit there and say, oh, my God, we're going to spend too much money on a free agent. They go out and say, let's get the best player available to plug in there. Now, has every move they've made worked? No, but they've hit on more than they've missed. And that's where they realize we have a quarterback. What can we do to maximize his talent? We are the polar opposite. We literally said we're going to do more with less. Sorry, doing more with less in the NFL is not uh, a winning. Mark, here's here's the problem that Angelo brought up in the last hour, Philly, and now it's rearing its head again. Mm -hmm. That entire Hassan Reddick deal was just an absolute train wreck from both sides of the aisle when it came to him and when it came to the Eagles and the Jets, but. Now that Brandon Graham's out and you got Bryce Huff out, you're going to be playing the edge with a guy from like Christian Catholic, Eagle Creek University, <laughs> Jalex Hunt, that's going to be taking reps who's undersized. Yeah. And then you got another undersized guy who's not a three-down lineman and a three-down edge rusher now and a three-down player in Nolan Smith. He's come on and played better, but he's not that guy. That move of them not bringing back Reddick is so in their face right now because here's the deal. They don't have personnel out there. They're signing guys off the street who are going to have no impact. Vic Fangio said today, hey, what are you making this guy Harris they signed? He goes, I don't know anything about him. I've never heard of him. So, Billy, I mean, that Hassan Reddick deal 
is being felt also right now. Yeah, I mean, we talked about this. I mean, how many times that that was like the one? I thought that was one too many moves. I never liked the trade. I never was down with it. And yeah, now it's coming back on us. There's no question about it. Um, what can you do? I, I don't know. I mean, what, what can you do in a situation like this? You can't go out and trade for guys. You're not going to pick anybody off, off the street. Uh, so, you, you know, Vic Fangio, he's a, supposed to be a good defensive coordinator, going to earn his money now. You know, that's it. Got to earn your money. All right, there, uh, cowboy guy. You Why am I here? Why am I here? Yeah, because it's fun. And it's what we do. This, fun oh, it's fun for Eagle fans. Because fun for us. Oh. Wait a minute. You're going to get your freaking time, too, because you know how these things go back and forth. Oh, okay. Hey, wait a minute. So I've you been, have you're to, here I've to been amuse bent, us. I've been bent over all season here, bro. Wait, look, I told you you would win five games this year. You don't have the personnel this year to do anything with oh, it. Okay. Shit. All that being said. So now you're talking about Jerry Jones giving Mike McCarthy a contract extension. How do yeah. you feel about that? And here's what I wrote. This, this is going to sound crazy, but him saying that means he has to recognize that this whole debacle of a season isn't all Mike McCarthy, that they had a part to play in this by not putting the talent on the field. And this is where I kind of wonder, would it have been conceivable that they went and said, we're not going to sign anybody, you know, of nature. We're not going to go out and spend you know, a whole bunch of money on an aging player. We're going to go ahead and take our lumps. We're going to clear off the roster because here's the thing. Now, hold up. Hold up for a second. Here. Here's the thing that's interesting is we've got $24 million in cap space next year already. We got 21 at the moment that'll roll over. And they can easily get to $100 million next year by using a couple of their triggers. If they decide that they want to use free agency, next year is the year that they go ahead and get into it. 35 of it goes to Micah. Okay, but here's the thing. As you talk about $89 million for Dak Prescott, they've got the restructured trigger already set up. He'll only be $38 million. Oh, God. Okay, I'm, I'm just saying, hey, it's a plan. If you're Great looking plan. at it and saying, hold it. If you're looking at this and saying you got a second or a third place yeah. schedule, you you got, you've you got 12. You, know, you, 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 point, you point it out right now. We're sitting at 11 for draft picks. And you got a hundred million dollars going into free agency. That's the time that you pounce. Will they? I don't know. I, I, listen, I ain't got a whole lot to work with here. You're just sitting there crying to me. Oh, okay, you're an idiot. Well, what the fuck, what the fuck do you want from me? What Wait do you on. want from me? My Hang team on. is shit, and I'm trying Wait. to at least, you know, we want to, we want you to acknowledge that Prescott's bit. not good. Hey, hey. Yeah, as opposed to Cooper Rush and uh, Trey. Lewis I want I want you to acknowledge that Dak Aaron Prescott Rogers? is it, nope. that Dak Prescott has led is the Dak Dallas Cowboys franchise down. I'll tell you what, I is Dak like better to... than Jalen with a full team and a good team? Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. We don't yeah. know because Dak Prescott's never had a full team. We know. What are you talking has, about? Has a what, guy what, on a why, what do you mean they don't have a, a full team? Pace. How can you, you, got you, how can you ignore you two, you all the years of wide receivers that they oh, have? No, 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 this no, is no, unbelievable. No, no, no. Did you see this guy is insane. Bro, bro. Insane. Our number two wide receiver in the membrane. Washington on Sunday, Noah Brown. Doing Noah Brown things, <laughs> dropping passes left and right. That was our number two receiver. Let's yeah, see but how what about Jalen Hurts is with that guy what about, as number two receiver. Yeah, but what Lewis. about all the Come years on, that they had? They had the best offensive line. It wasn't even close. They had, he had that he one was season, one of the best bro, running backs. One he had Amari Cooper. No, 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 it was no, more than no, one no, no, season. No, his, it was from his rookie years, first was the five years. First five years. What happened was. Jerry Jones got pissed no. off that he was paying all these guys and all this talent around Dak, and Dak was underperforming. So now he has to nope, pay Dak nope, all this nope, money. Nope, nope, he nope. said, I ain't pay, I ain't going to keep this talent on this team. Our he let him go. Line, our offensive line has been shit since 2017. We lost no Travis way. Frederick. Yes, we we still 17? are. We, no way. 2017. That's when Tyra Smith started breaking down, bro. Since 23. You don't remember the Chaz Green game where Chaz Green literally gave are up. Are you trying they, to they tell me that 22 O line was not good? 22 O line? 
The 2022 22, that was pretty good, but it still wasn't like it was in 2015 and 2016. It has not been a great one. No, no. All right, Philly, tell me this. How I, I just, this guy's insane. He is. Hey, it's, Philly. Are you hold it? Hold it. Wait, let's back it up. No, no, stop right there. Are you gonna say that the Dallas Cowboys offensive line 2020, 2021, 22, and 23 has been as good as the Eagles? No. I don't think okay. it is. No, but, but, but no, who, who is that? Okay, 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 wait, 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 wait. With A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard, are you – exactly. That's what your guy has. Are you going to say that at any yeah, point Mark, in the last four years that the Cowboys minute. have had a wide receiving Mark, core as good as Dallas Goddard, A.J. Mark, Brown, and Devontae how, Smith? How long has Dak been playing? I think nine 2016. years. 2016. 2016. How many years? Nine years? Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. So what happened to the first four years? First four years. The first year, we were 13-3. and three, Rookie year. Uh, ended up losing basically a, a shootout with Aaron Rodgers. You and lost to the number one seed. We lost the Packers. with an Aaron Rodgers with a miracle pass. It wasn't like that. That went down, took the lead. Aaron Rodgers in 40 seconds. That game. In 40 seconds. The defense couldn't hold Aaron Rodgers and they won. Dak started really bad. 304 and allowed Green Bay to get a lead. 304 yards and three TDs. If you want to talk I mean, about Dak starting off bad, you can look at Pat Dak, Mahomes. Dak, the How only many time times Dak has Pat Mahomes good numbers. And that offense been behind in the first first half? Yeah, but hey, they won three Super Bowls. They, they, exactly. But if you're sitting there, oh, he started off slow. Well, you know, here it is. Pat Mahomes always starts off slow. Well, he started but slow he in playoff games. games. Mark, uh, Mark. No, I'm not talking about the problem. regular season. Yeah, Mark, have you here's seen the what problem this team does as far as running the ball in the playoffs? Mark, here's the problem with the Cowboys oh, and their Lord. player development. Wait a minute. Compared to the Eagles, the Eagles have one first-round draft choice on the old line. You're making yes. it sound like they've spent a ton of equity here. Their left tackle's a seventh-rounder they found in another sport. Their left guard is a second. Their center is a second. The mm -hmm. right guard right now, they found him in free agency. He was trashed. And they the were better at finding out. Now talent. he's going to take be a, better. I tell you hey, what, take a look at the great wall It's your coaching Dallas. staff, dude. You That's have no offensive thank line you. coach. Talk to your old coach, Jimmy Johnson, and look at the guys that they ended up making the best football in the offensive line in Cowboys Cody history. Weiss. Okay. Because you yeah. had a right. Wait. Yeah. What changed that? Here, 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 Philly. Do you know what changed that Cowboy O-line? I'm going to really show was. you this. And I've had this conversation with Mark before, but he obviously he doesn't get it. So Mark Tune was a guy who was like a seventh round or a sixth rounder, came out yes. of Hawaii, he was a transfer from UCLA. Crawford Kerr was a third rounder. They had an aging Tom Rafferty. Then they went and drafted a guy, Mark Stanoski, in the third round or second round. Who was round. a guard? Who was a small guard? Then they converted to a center. Mm -hmm. The right guy was Nate, who was a free agent, a USFL free agent. And, and the right fast. tackle was Kevin Gogan. Those guys were all, guess what, except for Stepnoski. They were all with Tom Landry prior to Jimmy getting there. What changed it? Well, Jesus, dude, if he would have went out and got Josh Jacobs or Barkley or Henry, Emmett Smith changed that old line into the number one offensive mm -hmm. line in football because they had a premium back. Look at what the Eagles did. They had good backs. Sanders and DeAndre Swift were good. They brought an exceptional back in yeah. to the Giants. Discreet, the massive failure. That's why they're far ahead of you. They're far ahead of you right now because of player development in the old line. Yeah, because we got Jerry and Stephen Jones that think that they're smarter than everybody else, and we can just look, grab players look, at any point. Owner and much. GM get in your way in Philly too, but that old line coach they have in Jeff Stoutland, like you had Tony Weiss back in the day. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, this comes down to not knowing, dude. You have a guy in Melada is as good as Lane is right now. They're but he was a seventh rounder. Their player development in that offensive line. Hey, and I'll come over here to you now, Philly. You tell mm -hmm. me since the bye. And you tell me, and this goes to what kind of Mark said a couple weeks ago. So you're averaging 20 passes per game, and you're averaging 42 rushes. You're two to one. Mm -hmm. They've yeah. taken the ball out of the quarterback in many aspects in the passing game. You're 26th. 
in passing right now. You're number one in rushing, and you're number two in total offense. You're unbalanced, though. You know, Jim, a lot of people have different opinions. Do you believe you can win the Super Bowl with that formula of not making plays in the passing game and you being that unbalanced right now? You're well, I, Ellen Moore hasn't improved the passing game. You can't say that um, the formula is um, to to not be to not be passable. Like like no, I I think the formula of play good defense and you you base your offense on the run and everything's off the run. Yeah, I think you can win Super Bowl that way. Absolutely. But you're not making plays in the passing game. Yeah, I think you are making plays in a passing game. I, I did not every play. We've missed some plays, but I think we make a lot of good plays in the passing game. What do you mean? Um, okay, there's some big plays I've seen in the passing game. How about this? I don't. How about this I one think here, this Mark? is exactly the formula of Mark, how you get win. This. Mm-hmm. He's taken 27 sacks this year. People are telling me he's better in the blitz. He's yep. taken 27 sacks so far. Last year he had 36 total for the entire year. He hasn't gotten better in picking up the blitz he's taking sacks more which are minus plays and you're missing wide open throws dude that tight end wait a minute philly this last week against the rams the sack took you out of field goal position and gunner was wide open that's 10 points that you took off the board that when you get into the postseason that dude's gonna have to make plays in my opinion you don't think they do have to make plays when you get in no the game. i do right no, I do think okay. they have to make plays. And I think that the window of making mistakes is is drastically smaller in the playoffs. We see this all the time. So I, I don't disagree that you're going to have to make plays that maybe you missed uh, during a regular season. Yeah. However, I don't believe that the Eagles – are not passing the ball because somehow Jalen Hurts hasn't been a good quarterback. The fact is, is they have to play this style of offense. It would be criminal not to play this style of offense when you have the best player in the league at running back. You've got to play this style. And this style can win Super Bowls. Uh, I definitely believe that. Okay. Um, Mark? Can, can I say something here before you ask me a question? You, you do realize that this is a house of cards that you have right um i don't mean any harm but you guys have the easiest schedule in the freaking nfl and is while, while you're sitting there doing your circle jerk about talking about super bowls and things you know when, when you only beat the browns 20 to 16 when you beat the new york giants you know 28 to 3 you beat the Bengals, you beat the jaguars 28 23 and you beat the cowboys that literally you know we are on death's door with things it's not exactly a lot of quality wins there. And I think that you guys uh-huh. have up a little bit too much. You're getting a little too high yeah. in your supply. Mm-hmm. I, honestly, mm-hmm. looking at – and you're not going to be tested going down down the stretch here. Mm-hmm. That you might want to pump the brakes just a little bit. I'm just saying. because mm-hmm. Nobody's – no, pump it, the brakes on what? You act like we're, on, we're sitting here being you, obnoxiously – I'm not t- arrogant. Okay, bro, we're not. Bro. They're not. They're you, nine you and one for two, my man. I mean, are the they same, nine and two? Listen, Did they lose yeah. the Falcons? How how can you okay. possibly bring up the I'm Falcons game and then make all those excuses oh. about Dak Prescott in the playoffs? See, I'm not ta- all those see, years I'm not talking wrong. about my team making the playoffs. I'm not talking about yeah, my team going to the Super Bowl going like you are. To make the You're playoff. up here. Of course, we could go I'm to the saying, Super Bowl with this team. That course, team no, has not that, no. played. The question quality, was. The question was. Team. You got a one, buddy. Oh really? They have not, oh really? They Green have Bay. Not. Oh really? Green Bay's not a quality team. Green oh, Bay's not a quality okay. team. That was. Is that Green was Bay not a quality ago. team? How do you What do you mean a lifetime ago? That was week one. I'm sorry. Tampa Bay. We lost to Tampa Bay. Yeah, oh, that was the last time. Wait, and, wait, and who else did we lose to? You who else? Molly Wap by it. Molly Are Wap you bro. talking about week four of the NFL? Oh, but week you're talking four, about Green right? Bay week one. You said, yeah, Look I'm answering mirror, your question. Look did you mirror. beat anybody good? Oh, yes, we beat everybody four. good. You just praised yes. the big win of the week one. Come on, Philly. You're a fraud. No, no, no. no you, you're, you're twisting you things. You are twisting things. You are so full of shit. It's not even funny. Your question was, did the Eagles beat anybody good? I said, yes, Green Bay Packers. That's what I said. 
Why okay. wouldn't I say that? Well, are the Packers not good? Okay. So you okay. change and you twist shit because your team sucks ass and they're going so, nowhere. It's not my fault. So is, I can't help it. Only, but no, the no, truth no, of the matter is this. He so asked, is, is that the only he team that is actually above 500 about a be? style of play. He asked about a style of play and if it can take us to the Super Bowl. And you okay, interpret that as bragging because okay. your team sucks ass. You're twisting words, Mark. <laughs> Stop twisting words. So, bro, the only team that you have beaten with a winning record is Green Bay then, right? Only right? winning record. No, I don't the think The only that's the team, team that has a winning record that you beat. I have hey, to look at the out, oh, hey, I'm sorry. They and Washington, out. I'm sorry. And Washington, but they're frauds, too. They, they lost to the Cowboys. Oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah they they're frauds, right. Yeah, they're frauds, and, and this team's frauds. This is the same shit you said in 2017. And what happens? Woo. We went and won a Super Bowl Woo. in 2017. Woo. The fact of the matter is, this team is 9-2. and two. And just yeah. acknowledging and they were 10 that they're one, one of the best year. teams in the conference is not a crime. It is not being arrogant. No. It is not saying, oh, we got to pump the brakes. Pump the brakes on what? We're 9-2. I just, said, nine and two. just a little bit shit. on the Super Bowl talk. Because I, pump I think that we were here. Mark. I believe we were right here last year at 10-1. and one. Before the uh -huh. wheels fell off the yeah. wagon, there, bro. You mean you mean right before the Dak Prescott epic collapse to the Green oh, Bay Packers? Who we you beat? Go. You mean that? Okay. Oh, but it ain't Dak's I forgot. Fault. You did so I mean, well Dak against Tampa Bay, though, didn't Dak you? There, bro. Doesn't have any talent around him. He can't help it that he sucks in the playoffs oh, when it matters. He okay. can't help that as a number one CD loss, as a number two CD loss. He stinks. But you want to talk about the Eagles and the playing Tampa Bay when you can't acknowledge after eight years Tampa Bay that your you quarterback guys. can't win a big game. Tampa Bay ain't going to make the playoffs. So they ain't uh, even yeah, an issue. Yeah, but they beat you. Okay, oh. that was, yeah, they beat us. They beat us. Oh, my God. They beat us. Oh. Fire everybody. Get rid of everybody, Sills. Oh. Cut. Cut Jalen Hurts. Let Saquon Barkley go. They oh, lost to the God. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Holy shit. <laughs> I love hey, you, Philly. Dude. I love Philly, you. Let me ask you. you. Let me ask you, Philly. How important this guy? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be eating like Mark today after this shit. Hey, hey, yeah. oh, hey Philly. How important is it for Philadelphia? You want to? You want to hear something? Here's a stat I brought up with Xander yesterday. How important is it for the Eagles to get home field advantage? I want you to do this for me. Think about the only teams that have ever won Super Bowls that were dome teams. Colts, Saints, those are the only teams that I can think of that have won Super Bowls that were domes. Maybe that Rams team in St. Louis that played in that dome, but there are only like three teams, and Detroit is obviously a dome team here. How important is it to get that NFC title game? Because here's another little nugget. Philadelphia has never gone to a Super Bowl. What they haven't hosted home field advantage. Hmm. I I mean personally, I I think it's it's pretty important. I I don't think it, you know I don't think that it's make or break, but I think it's very important. I I think the advantages the Eagles have home field, you know, cold weather outdoor stadium in January against the dome team like. Detroit, I think would be a big advantage. I, I think so. So I do think it's it's important. Now, I will say this. I think that if the Eagles have to go into Detroit, I do think they can win because of the style of play. So um, I'm not saying it's easy, and I'm not saying they'll be the favorites, but I don't think it's impossible. But as far as your question, yes, home field is very important. How about this for Mark? Hey, so who are you going to draft in April? Uh, what, I'm not even thinking hey, about Philly. draft right now. But, so okay. what, what position? How about this? What position? What position? Hey, uh, they should get a Philly. Now, it'll probably Philly, be wide You're worried receiver. about Baltimore this weekend. And this guy, right. who, are you taking, who are you taking in the draft in April? He's taking a quarterback. I'm taking a quarterback. Yeah. They need a, hey, Philly, they need a quarterback. You, they need a real leader. Hey, Philly, what do you make of the Eagles being underdogs against the Ravens on Sunday? I think it's fair. I mean, you know, I, I think it's we're going to win, fair. but I think it's fair. I, they're playing in Baltimore. Good team. I, I can see that. Um, what, what's the spread? I don't know what the spread is off the top of my hand. 
Oh, right. That's just a three point spread is just that they got home field. It's a it's a pick 'em game, but they get three points for being at home. Uh, Eagles are going to win. That's the Eagles line. I like that line. They're seven I think that's the Eagles I think- line. Oh, hang on here now. If I'm not they mistaken, destroyed, here, I, I boy, did think. they destroy the Chargers on the road? Well, they're an eight and four team, and you guys are nine and two. How come they're favored? They started off slow, bro. They're getting in a roll right now. Well, look at but- who they've played. That AFC, look at who the A look at the North Division itself. I mean, you're playing quality quarterbacks. And by the way, one thing I will disagree with you on, Mark, on what um Philly said. Hey, dude, they shut down. A guy who's having an MVP season, his team may blow, but that Joe Burrow, man, after that opening drive of 17 plays, mm-hmm. they shut down Jamar Chase. Shut I mean, him they, down. They shut him down, man. I mean, okay. to me, that's shut quality him down. Take Like the Green Bay Packers shut Dak Prescott down. I'm just saying, listen, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'll be real with you. I'm not saying that the Eagles aren't a good team and stuff, but you have to look at it when you start talking about the Giants, the Commanders, you know, Jaguars. Um, you know, some of the you, you played some of the bottom tier teams in there, and you don't really know. You'll this will be a good gauge going against Baltimore. If you go through and you beat Baltimore, I, I will, you know, I'll bend the knee and say, Yeah, I don't you need are to see it anymore. I think they're pretty good. I think this is not going to define because I don't think you take 10 wins or 10 weeks away of football. And look, it's like you said, they don't really need to win. This game against the Ravens, they need to beat those NFC teams. However, they're fighting for home field. So, you know, you said this. By the by, the way, they'll probably have to play their starters in the Carolina game and in the mm-hmm. Cowboy game because mm-hmm. th- if Detroit continues to win, Detroit's got some pretty big games. They got Buffalo on the flip side. Philly, my question then comes back to you about Barkley. Dude, I mean, he's going to get 340 carries here, man. I mean, that's, that's a, a ton of carries right now. And he's had, and you got Derrick Henry this weekend. You've got three of the yeah. five MVP candidates. Are you concerned about the workload that he has had? He's carrying the ball around 24 times a game like an old school running back from I, back in the day. I, I, I mean, I, I think for the in terms of this year, I think he's fine. But, you know, you wonder what that does, you know, towards the, you know, few years down the road in terms of getting all those carries. But, I mean, I think I think you just you know you you got to use him right now. It, it's just it's just too much. I'm actually really happy with the way that they've used them. They're not you know if you look at the first like half of this game or you look at the Washington game, even though he didn't break 45, 50 yard runs, they stuck with the run, and this team just wears you down. This offensive line wears teams down, and then he you know he has big yards. I think I think you just got to roll with it, Sills, at this point. I, I don't think there's no changing. How about this for Mark tomorrow? So I'm, I'm going to ask him what kind of food is going to be around the stream tomorrow because it's the greatness of Cooper Rush versus Tommy DeVito. Oh, that'll be a, Lord. That'll, that'll be a barn burner to buy. <laughs> hey, Philly, if, make sure you eat your make sure you eat your turkey early because you might throw up on this game watching. This I, uh, yeah, I think I, I might I might even put the parade on, and oh, I never put boy. the parade on. Hey. hey, hey. Right, you might put the parade on looking for the big Andy Reid float, big red. Float I, I mean, them ropes. <laughs> Dallas, Dallas should have signed Daniel Jones and started him just to yes. make this game oh, interesting. On, yes. just, Why waste just that to money? Make it you know, no, it would have no. made this. It would have made Thanksgiving squad interesting. In Minnesota, what money are you talking about? No, I don't want. I don't want that stake. I don't want no. Sign New him. Wait, you, you, you don't want to. You don't really want to win, do you? You don't want to win that. Then Daniel Jones is not going to win hands. this late in the season. Explain to me but you don't want to win. You want you want a good playoff. You want to be drafted. What? 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 What is Trey Lance doing on your team? Trey Lance was the hope that they wouldn't have to sign Dak Prescott. That's what your he was strategy of hope has been exactly why your team has got as many wins as they do. Do I own that? Because team? It was a game plan do, of do, hope. Do, do I ha- own that team? Do I make the calls on that team? No. Talk to no, your but boy, you're the one putting Jones. out all the – eating all the food. By the way, what, what's going to be on the dinner plate for tomorrow? Ooh. Hey, hey, Philly, I, I've how got much two food do you think this guy consumes tomorrow? I've got two tur- – we're, we're going to smoke one think- turkey, an herb turkey. You're smoking what regular. first before you eat the turkey? I'm, smoke, I'm smoking a turkey. Oh, a smoked turkey. I thought you were smoking turkey, some rope. i got a regular turkey. we got a ham. 
We've got sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes, wow. broccoli, really? and cheese. This is going to be a fast and, and what tomorrow, we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of everything. We're going to put it on a sub roll, and we're going to have a leftover sub wow. for the game. Okay. I think uh, – I think I think there will be probably you know actually bet us shout out to bet us they're actually they actually put up postmarks over unders of feedings so I think the over under feedings tomorrow is about five I'm t- I already Ooh. bet it I took the over. any pump hey, over I ain't gonna be mad about it any pie or anything surely there's oh a pie man there. oh listen I got hold on let me show you I, I, I'm gonna teach just give me a second. You get I've done, I, the most excited you've seen Mark in years talking about food. Hey, right. the only thing that I enjoyed today was that cat ears. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't. It wasn't talking about the food. The cow. Holy shit! That, that is that nice. what I think yeah. it is? Is that a lemon meringue? Look at that shit. <sighs> that lemon that meringue pie. Lemon meringue. Pie. Lemon meringue. My eighty-seven. I'm sorry, eighty-five-year-old mother. Handmade. Lemon. Oh, I got two of them. That looks great. That looks great. <laughs> this, this is the shit right here. My He's got mother. Two of them. I got two of them. <laughs> and, and a sweet potato one too. <laughs> Look, hey, I've got them upstairs here. here. I'm hiding. I'm hiding my hey, pie hey, Philly, is there Ain't nobody else getting tomorrow. There. I'm somebody losing a limb in this guy's presence when he's oh. manjing me tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> you, you're right, man. It's, you don't. It might be an arm or two. <laughs> you guys were great, man. Hey, I want to tell you guys something here, man. From the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you guys doing this for me. You guys are so successful on your channels and what you do. You always find time for us here. Mark, you've taken a fucking beating this year. Like, yeah. seriously, like you were in a like you were in a jail cell somewhere out west there in, in Cochrane, getting your ass kicked in solitary confinement. I mean, a complete beating, and you still came here, and there's Philly just yeah. taking shots at big sills going, we're going to win the Super Bowl, dude, and we're going to run it down people's throat. I don't give a shit what you think about the past game. <laughs> So and, hey, and when it doesn't happen, I'll be right here laughing. Oh, I don't think it's going to happen either, but we'll see. I mean, they're good right now. They were good like this. Hey, well, before he goes, let's do this. How come you feel more confident now at nine and two this year than you did um, last year when you were ten and one? Well, last year when you were ten and one, you know, it, really, I, I like I said to you last week, I I, I was fully. I fully admit it, I bought into the whole ten and one hype. It was that 49ers game and how that game ended that really to me was like there was a problem. I so think, what if I the Ravens right now, blow you out? What if the Ravens blow you out like that on Sunday? You don't believe well, that. Well, I mean it's it's one thing to, to get blown out, but it was they they were like they were bullying us. You know what I mean? And and that that's what, what bothered me. I think with the coaching staff, I think we're much better coached. I think the defense is I mean the defense is what number one defense in the league right now. Yep. I think I think they got the coaches to stop, you know, any sort of uh, a momentum of losing and stuff. So I think I just think we're in a better situation. And I think Saquon Barkley is is a is a giant difference maker. He just is. You better have a lot of humble pie tomorrow, there, Mark. When you're watching that live stream, is eating that nice humble pie there. Hey, Mark, oh, thank man, you so much. It. Have a great game tomorrow. I think you guys are winning big. Then you're going to hear this, Philly. Well, we're five and seven, and or we're, 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 we're two out of 500, and there's a shot. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, the- why not? So I you're mean, telling why me not? there's a chance. If, if, if yes! Tampa could beat the Eagles, why can't we make the playoffs? I, I know it's coming. I do too. Oh, really, God bless you. to you, you and your too. family. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Mark, to you and your family and all the people up in Vermont that like to do the maple syrup and the maple syrup, Mark Holmes run. All those folks have a happy turkey day too. Mark, thank you very much, man, and have a great Thanksgiving yourself. You both and your too. Same to both of y'all. God you bless, man. Stay. Thank you so much. And I'll be watching happy that bullshit of yours tomorrow, Mark, when you're live streaming. Yeah. Make sure yeah. you do. Oh, Appreciate I'll be you watching. guys very much. Thank you guys so Thank much. Thank you. All right. God bless. Guys. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 kind of hard with Mark because his team right now is right now on a respirator. You know that person that sits on a respirator? He's there going like this. 
Would can Dr. Kaborkian come in and just give me the last rights and put a pillow over my face? I feel like we need to go and get Dr. Kaborkian for the for the uh, Cowboys. And, and and Philly's like, Sills, we can win this bullshit. I appreciate you guys. Xander's going to join us. We'll read the Super Chats. Mark Holmes, thank you very much. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.